Today, I get to introduce my good friend, Rick Love. He is a, a professional peacemaker and has really traveled the world doing peacemaking. He's particularly an expert in Christian-Muslim relations and has been building peace between Christians and Muslims around the world. And he's come many times to Coast to teach us, to teach us how to build peace uh, between ourselves and our neighbors, both in terms of differences in religion, but also just uh, in our families and our friendships and our workplaces. He's been teaching us uh, how to be builders of peace. And so we're really excited that he's here to share with us again this morning. I'm going to pray for him and then let him take over here. Oh, Holy Spirit, would you come and would you just fill Rick right now? God, thank you for the unique gift that you have given to him. And God, I ask that you would impart that gift to us today. Lord, that you would teach us more and more to be peacemakers, to be people after your own heart. Yeah. Would you fill him with your presence and would you meet us here today and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Wow, that was great worship. Did you enjoy it? Where's, where's the worship team? I wanted to thank them. Okay, they, they left. Uh, I want to especially thank Jesus for showing up. That was the best part. Um, I don't know about you, but there's been a lot of disruption in life uh, in the last number of weeks for many. Um, and even if not, I saw this on Facebook. It's a spoof on um, the Serenity Prayer, and I just thought, it's appropriate, for at least how some people feel. God, grant me wine to accept the things I cannot change, coffee to change the things I can, and chocolate to know the difference. <laughs> All right, good. You're, you have a sense of humor. I, um, I was just in Washington, D.C. for this last week, so I'm kind of decompressing and trying to get back into the local city. Uh, San Diego County. I, I just moved to Oceanside about three and a half months ago. So I'm, I'm loving it, and I'll be hanging around here more, bugging you guys in different times and in different ways. Uh, anyway, I went to uh, Washington, D.C. for a gathering of Evangelicals for Peace. It's a group I helped uh, birth, and our focus was Christians engaging global conflict, ISIS and Syria. So uh, it was very good to move immediately, not just thinking about the elections in the U.S. to what's going on at a global level. And Congressman McGovern gave a great introduction. It got us immediately caught up into the unique challenges. Uh, then I had the privilege of, uh, this was at Capitol Hill. We met there for the first part of our uh, consultation. And what a joy to greet and welcome uh, about 50 Policymakers, activists, uh, leaders, peacemakers, trying to change the world. Um, we had the president of uh, National Association of Evangelicals, Leith Anderson, uh, speak to us. Um, but but I share all this to say, um, one of the coolest things that happened is. We have been working on this. Evangelicals for Peace has been going on for years. This is our second major conference. And I was so happy that we had a panel that had pro-Trump and pro-Clinton uh, perspectives, debating, dialoguing, and it was really good. I just want you to know it's possible. It was happening. Uh, what a joy. Didn't agree with everything, but boy, uh, and you, if you see that, uh, there's Jim Wallace, uh, is one of the speakers sojourners. And then you have uh, someone from uh, Liberty University, um, where Falwell's from. And so it was an interesting but exciting dynamic. Not only do we have that, but um, I was moderator uh, for a panel on countering violent extremism. Uh, there were supposed to be five people. That, see the gal right next to me? That's Jennifer Bryson. She was an interrogator at Guantanamo Bay. Uh, so she <laughs> really knows the unique challenges of extremism. And she was one of our speakers. And we had another who had been 25 years in the military, worked in the Pentagon, 
loves Jesus and was really committed to help us think through how to do what we need to do to, to reach out to Muslims and counter extremism. And just before we were on, I got this text message. Rick, sorry I'm late. I can't make it on time. I've been asked uh, up to the Trump Tower. I'm in New York helping them pick people that deal with national security issues uh, and countering violent extremism. I go, stay there. <laughs> We're praying for you. This is great news. Uh, he did come later and share. Um, so that was uh, quite a consultation. Uh, I also uh, was there for the launch of Turning Point, a new comprehensive strategy for countering violent extremism uh, that was co-chaired by Tony Blair, former prime minister uh, of Great Britain, England, and then Leon Panetta, former CIA director and, and uh, Secretary of Defense for the U.S. So uh, these were men who knew the issues, and they'd done this amazing research um, over the last number of years, and their goal was to present to the new administration, whoever it may be, uh, evidence-based research that would help them um, work on a strategy to address terrorism, extremism, and to help us be more effective and work towards peace. Uh, it was very encouraging because uh, basically their research affirmed what our organization does, what Peace Catalyst International does. This, they said that it's, it's really important to have a long-term perspective and it's really important to use soft power. Now in political jargon, soft power is the opposite of hard power. Hard power is military, police, uh, that kind of thing. And this uh, comprehensive strategy says we need civil society. We need to work with churches and, and other groups, building relationships. Um, and it got me thinking specifically of Imam Taha. Now, Imam Taha has spoken here. Do you know, how many know Imam Taha? Okay. This is an amazing man, amazing peacemaker, good friend. Uh, And I want to say to you, keep reaching out to men and women like Imam Taha, reaching out to Muslims. It is important not just to be faithful followers of Jesus. That's good enough. Amen. Just to love our neighbors, ourselves. I believe that um, how we respond to our Muslim neighbors is one of the key challenges of our generation. And I praise God for this church. I praise God that you are doing well. Keep up the good work according to the strategy. One, according to Jesus, we're doing good stuff by loving our Muslim neighbor. According to those concerned about uh, violent extremism, when we love Muslims, that breaks the narrative of the radical uh, Islamists who say America is uh, on a jihad. America is on a campaign to kill Muslims, to hate Islam. And when we reach out in love, that just messes them up. And it, it, it not only demonstrates Jesus, but it, it's a long-term way to prevent uh, violent extremism. And so that was quite a time I had in um, D.C., and I'm really glad to be here. Um, a couple years ago, I was teaching peacemaking at Denver Seminary. I used to live in Colorado before I moved here. And... We were teaching, I was teaching at this point on uh, the relationship of the church and state, Romans 12 and Romans 13, and dealing with terrorism. Now, most of the students um, are young seminary students, but we did have two uh, pastors from Kenya. And so I'm talking about uh, addressing terrorism and how the church needs to do this and this. And Pastor John Karuga says, Rick, where I live in Kenya, we have El Shabaab right, right next door in Somali. They come in and they're attacking. What can I do? What can I do to, to help and save our country from El Shabaab? Well, that got everyone's attention. And I said, okay, 
how do I answer this one? Uh, and I think the Lord made it very clear to me what I needed to say. And I said, Pastor John, you're not responsible to save Kenya from El Shabbat. You're responsible to work within your network, work with your friends, the people in the marketplace, schools, wherever you work. You have a sphere of influence. That's what you're called to do. And that's my message to you. Today I want to talk about the theme, Peace Begins With Me. Whether we're in trauma or triumph over the elections, God calls the church to be peacemakers. It says, Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. It does not say the peace lovers, the peace talkers, but the peacemakers, those who make peace. And uh, it's very profound when you change things up. When we think of blessing, and it is blessed are the peacemakers, but that can also be translated happy. Happy are the peacemakers, for they should be called the children of God. We are pleasing God. We are acting like his children when we reach out in peace. Peace begins with me. Peace begins with you. I just, I want you, I just want to have a counseling session now. And I just want to say, right now, would you ask the Holy Spirit to do what he wants to do in you? And would you just say, okay, Lord. I want to start with myself. I don't want to, you know, some people go, peace begins with me. You go, oh, I wish my husband were here, or I wish my cousin were here. You know, go get him, Rick. And No, <laughs> peace begins with me. Peace begins with you. And, and, you know, Scripture repeatedly says, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. So, uh, peace begins with me. Are you willing to at least ask these questions? Um, and I want us to begin by praying a famous prayer together uh, from, by St. Francis. And what I want to do is we'll, I want us to pray this as we enter in to this. And we'll pray one petition, and then I want you just to reflect on it. Maybe pray silently. And we're going to pray through. And there's actually two whole sections of this prayer, but I can only give you one because I knew one's hard enough. Okay, so let's do it. Let's say this together. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. May that be our prayer today, this morning, as we enter in. Peace begins with me. I want us to uh, begin with the theme, uh, be the peace. Let's start by being the peace. One of the biggest challenges um, for all followers of Jesus is to experience and live in personal peace. There's a lot of reasons to be anxious. Uh, and if you're like me, I'm so connected. You know, my email's going off, Facebook, Twitter, phone calls, and, and we're so connected, so it, it just can overwhelm us and the challenges. And when I read the news, and, and I have my Google News set up, so I look at all the conflicts around the world, and whew. Uh, but we're called to, to personal peace. And I want to begin with this great promise. Let's just think about what Jesus offers. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. You know, if, if we could walk out of here, each of us, 
and have a handle on personal peace and say, Jesus, you promised this in the midst of trouble, in the midst of tumult, whatever I'm facing. Uh, that's a promise. And then I want us to see this in light of this command. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Um, to which indeed you were called in one body and be thankful. Uh, be the peace. Be the peace. Um, I want you to notice when he says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Uh, there, we have to submit to that. We have to let his peace come. We have to pray continually. Um, in Peace Catalyst International, we, we con constantly talk about following Jesus and waging peace. Peace is a battle. <laughs> we have the world, the flesh, the devil, everything wants to rob us of peace. And in fact, you know, we're commanded, do not be anxious. Most of us would not think anxiety is a sin. But according to Scripture, it is. We're not trusting at that point. Think of Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not be anxious, but in all things, pray with supplication and thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And then it says what? And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your heart and minds in Christ Jesus. We definitely need about 12 more hours to focus on personal peace. But I hope, I hope you hunger for that. I hope you realize Jesus can give us that peace. I'm, I was so encouraged singing uh, Jehovah Shalom, you know, the Prince of Peace. Uh, Jesus is the embodiment of peace and peacemaking. Uh, he's not only the Prince of Shalom, but Ephesians 2 says Jesus is our peace. And he gives us this peace. Uh, you ready to throw off some of that anxiety and say, yes, Lord, I want that peace. Are you ready to let the rule of Christ, the peace of Christ rule in your hearts? And I want you to notice it says rule in your hearts. And then it talks about uh, living it out in the body. So it's both personal, social, uh, with all that you're facing, with all the church is facing, Jesus offers us peace. And then he commands us, let the peace of Christ, let my peace rule in your hearts. Uh, you need it, and the world needs it. When, when Peace Catalyst started, one of our guys said, you know, Rick, there are a lot of angry peacemakers, and we don't want to be those. And... <clears throat> And one of my favorite sayings is Jesus is not just a peacemaker, but also a peace disturber. Sometimes you have to disturb the peace. Martin Luther King had to do this, uh, but it was always for the sake of love. It, when Jesus disturbed the peace, he was confronting the, the, the hypocrisy of the Pharisees, etc. But that's another sermon. I just want to point out uh, that Jesus today says, peace begins with me. Peace begins with us individually, and we need to be the peace we have commands, we have promises, and I believe we have the whole uh, St. Francis prayer in your notes, so you can pray that this week. Uh, you know, the, if you pray that prayer, it's very convicting. Did anyone get convicted just as you pray through that? Because that's the real deal. That's what Jesus is about, all of those things, and it doesn't come. You can't just take a pill. You can't just hear a sermon. You know, it's an ongoing waging peace, receiving his peace, resting in his peace. Uh, peace begins with me, and we need to be the peace. We need to be the peace. But we're not just called to be the peace, we're also called to seek the peace. Um, in Jeremiah 29.7, it says, seek the peace of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its peace, you will have peace. Now, um, the, what is the context of this particular command in verse? What city are they in? Where are the people of God at this point in history? They're in Babylon. Okay, Babylon is the evil empire. No matter how good or bad you think the U.S. is, Babylon was worse. 
And, and whatever your fears are, all the, the negative stuff, all the positive stuff, whatever stuff is happening in our world today, what is happening in San Diego, San Diego County, uh, I think we need to take this verse seriously. So here are people in exile, living in the evil empire. And you know what this, this is, this is like hundreds of years before Jesus said, love your enemies. But this is, this is how Jeremiah talks about loving your enemies. How do you do that? Seek the shalom, the human flourishing of the city. Seek the peace and prosperity of the city where I have sent you. Command one, seek the peace. We have to pursue it. We're continually called to pursue peace, to strive for peace. And I love that NIV translation in at least three verses. It says, make every effort to live at peace with one another. Uh, you have to wage peace. It's a battle. Um, first command, seek the peace. Second command, pray for the city. And we can apply this to uh, the government, the present elections. We need to pray. Seek the peace and pray. And then there's the promise. And what's the promise of Jeremiah 29, 7? In its peace, you will have peace. So shalom comes back uh, to us. It's a simple sermon. We need to be the peace. And then we need to seek the peace. Um, when I was in Colorado about a year and a half ago, I started a mediation. Here was a very practical way that I was seeking the peace of Denver. Uh, I was asked to mediate uh, between Burmese refugees. It was such a challenge and so uh, stirring for me. Um, there are nine different ethnic groups uh, and thus nine different languages. <laughs> there are three major religions, Christian, Buddhist, uh, and Muslim. So there, there had actually been a murder already between the groups. They, they come from the violence that is comparable to what ISIS is like. It's just horrendous to read and hear their stories in, in our mediation times and, and starting here in this gathering. That, by the way, I used to live in Indonesia. I was a missionary in Indonesia 100 years ago. And that felt, that's so Asian. We're sitting in a circle. So we began with a peace feast, just letting them share their stories and get to know one another. It was a wonderful start, but it was a lot of work. There had been, as I said, murders between the groups there. They had come from violence, uh, different religions. Uh, and, and to actually do the mediation, we had to, we had to do it in Burmese and English. So we had this translator, and we went through all this did a lot of visiting, but it was so beautiful. Um, at the end of this, we, we, they chose a team. This is a leadership team that's going to serve the broader uh, Burmese community. Um, Christian pastor, a Muslim imam, a Buddhist, and then a uh, Christian gal. I'm happy they got one woman in there, right, Michelle? Uh, but this is there's ethnic diversity, their choices. And so this was over a year. Just a little practical way that God allowed me to seek the peace of Denver, seek the peace of the city. Uh, and you, you might not get to mediate with refugees, but I bet some of you have relationships with refugees. Anyone here have relationships with any refugees? You know, that's a practical way we seek the peace of the city. Uh, you know, the reason they're refugees is because they're fleeing from conflict, fleeing from all kinds of things. They need peace. And so you can be the peace. There's a lot of practical ways uh, that we can serve in the city. Um, so I want you to think, what is your sphere of influence? You have... I was able to uh, work with these Burmese because of my background as, as a conflict resolution practitioner, someone who's worked with Muslims. Uh, but you know, every one of you have friends, have a network of people. Just as I said to Pastor John, you're not responsible to save Kenya from El Shabaab, you're responsible for your network. 
Well, you have a network. I have a network. And how are you going to serve? How are you going to be the peace and seek the peace within your network? No, that's Jamie and Michelle's job. No, um, we just want to, well, no, peace begins with you. <laughs> peace begins with me. So what does it mean for us to let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts? What do you need to do? Uh, do you need to meditate and, and memorize verses on peace? Pray through. There's, there are lots of practices. Uh, and we could take about 12 more hours just on that easily. Uh, but not today. Um, and then seek the peace. Seek the shalom, uh, the human flourishing of the city. Uh, In John 20, when Jesus commissioned his disciples, uh, it's a beautiful picture. He, he shows up, you know, Jesus shows up in post-resurrection. He shows up in meetings, everyone goes, whoa, and he says, peace be upon you. So uh, it's, it's similar to what the Muslims say, salamu alaikum, it's shalom alaikum. So it's uh, very similar. He calls peace upon him. And then right before he gives his commission, he says, and again, he says, peace be upon you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And I believe Jesus wants to commission you today, wants to commission us today, or he's looking for those here who say, yes, peace begins with me. I want to receive Jesus' peace, and then I want to be sent into the city to be peacemakers, bridge builders, uh, with those in conflict, those in need. Now, I uh, started off with a joke about um, the serenity prayer. You know, Lord, give me wine to accept the things I cannot change, and, and coffee to change the things I can, and chocolate to know the difference. Uh, I think it's okay to have uh, humor. But I want us to end by praying this prayer. I used to think, I I'm an activist. Uh, and I used to think, oh, this prayer is so wimpy. Accept the things I cannot change. Jesus and I, we can change anything, everything. And, you know, and then you grow up a little bit. And, but, you know, God grant me the serenity, the peace to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Let me explain a few things. Um, like I said, I thought this was wimpy, but now I think this is one of the most profound prayers we can pray. So I'm giving you two prayers. You have St. Francis and... Niebuhr's prayer here. And what a great way to practically apply some of this. So you can take that home with your notes. Um, Jesus did not heal or save or deliver everyone in the streets he walked in Galilee, in Jerusalem, in Samaria. He only did what he saw, Good Vineyard teaching, the Father doing. Jesus had a limited calling in some respects as a human. Uh, in Ephesians 2.10, it says about us, we are his workmanship. You are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that you should walk in them. And he prepared beforehand. That's a long time ago. Uh, and Jesus has unique good deeds for each of us here. And that's why this prayer is so powerful, because we can be so anxious about uh, the elections and these things. And, and listen, I believe we need to wrestle with things at all levels. You know, I, I just spent a week in D.C. talking about uh, global war, dealing with countering violent extremism. So we need to operate at different levels. Uh, we need to be praying but we each have a network. We each have a sphere of influence. And you can get so caught up in worrying about others, their sphere of influence or what should happen, that you're not faithful in yours. You're not being the peace in yours. You're not seeking the peace in yours. So now when I pray, Lord, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, that's a prayer for peace. It's saying, I, I can't be anxious about everything. Jesus is in charge. And, but then it says, 
Give me the courage to change the things I can. We have a network. We have things we need to fight for, live for, love for, serve for, and bless within our networks. And then the last petition, oh Lord, give me the wisdom to know the difference, to be able to discern what I'm supposed to do. Now, the good news is for you young zealots, God can, oh, and old zealots. I was saved in the Jesus movement in 1970, and I'm still a Jesus freak, kind of. But we, we need to say, Lord, expand my network. <laughs> Give me new open doors. Uh, and the principle, too much is given, much is required. We need to be faithful in little things. He can expand our influence. But right now, you, let's worry about that another time. I want you to think of your sphere right now. And let's, I want us to stand and pray this prayer together. Can we as a community? And I'm going to do the same thing. I want to, I'm going to read, we'll, we'll do one petition at a time and pause. Okay. And I want you to think what that means. Together, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The courage to change the things I can. And the wisdom to know the difference. Amen and amen. You know, one thing that I'm just sensing really strongly today, again, is that we're in a season right now at Coast Vineyard where the Lord is calling us out, and He's sending us out, and He's calling us to make commitments. He's calling us to be in our community. I'm reminded of all of the things that we've been talking about over the last couple of months. I shared with you that years ago, God had given me a, an image of our church as a, a standing army and the Lord saying, send them out. That, that we weren't to be standing, but that we were to be going. Um, and, it, and that this is the time of our going. Uh, a few weeks ago, Jamie said that he felt like the Lord was calling us to minister to particular places, that, that he was calling us out particular people to particular places and ask people to come up if they sense the Lord calling them to their workplace or calling them to their neighbors to be commissioned. You know, last week we talked about our commitment to love our neighbors in spite of anything that might be going on around us. And again, just today in, in Rick's call for us to be peacemakers, I, I, I hear the Lord just speaking to us, calling us, sending us out, calling us to commit to being peacemakers in, in every area of our lives where we have influence. I want to invite the prayer ministry team up, and I would like to just ask Rick to pray a, a prayer of commissioning over us. So if, if people can just maybe put your hands out in a posture of receiving and receive whatever it is that the Lord has for you. mindset on the spirit is life and peace so I pray spirit of God your life and peace <clears throat> would rest on everyone here come spirit of God right now I pray you would break anxiety you would expose unbelief and lift the burdens and lift people into your very presence peace receive the peace of Jesus and I pray, Lord, now that you would commission. Lord, I can talk all I want, but I pray for your holy commissioning, that you would bring names to mind, situations that need peacemakers, places that they need to engage for the sake of love, for the sake of peace, for the sake of your name. I bless this congregation with peace. I bless this congregation with discernment and strength and resolve 
to lean into conflict where necessary with the love of Jesus and set people free. But Lord, it has to begin with them. So I, again, I pray, let the peace of Jesus rest upon everyone here. Go in peace. Make the peace. Spread the peace in Jesus' name. just wait a moment and see if the Lord is going to give us any specific words for prayer. So pause for a moment. Is anyone sensing the Lord giving them a word for us? Hi. Um, I think I got a word. I normally think in English, but this word came to me in Korean. Um, which means do not fear. And I think it's specifically for this week. Um, maybe going home is bringing up fear for someone, for many people. Um, and just an encouraging word from the Lord saying, um, how he said in Joshua, do not be afraid. Um, be strong and courageous for I am with you wherever you go. And so if you are um, struggling with fear or um, unsure or doubtful about what to say this week or just heading home, uh, whatever that brings up for you, um, please come up and get prayer. We'd love to break fear off of you um, and commission you to walk in freedom this week. Thanks, Grace. And Patrick also has a word for us. Uh, Dear Coast, uh, for like so many years did I have spiritual ADD in terms of God's call on my life. And uh, my wife and I moved to Hillcrest to do outreach to LGBTQ people three years ago. It's been the best thing I've ever done is to follow him in his leadership. And I just feel like he wants to break off in light of what uh, Dr. Rick, was, uh, Dr. Love was saying actually was basically we have responsibility for what we're responsible for. Nothing more, nothing less. And so I want to break off uh, any spiritual ADD into God's call on your life. Can I pray for that real quick? All right. <clears throat> Lord, I just stay, I thank you for the call that you have on lives here, this community of people that you love God, that you've, you've set apart for your work, for your purposes created before the time began, God. We're your poems, we're your poetry, and I just pray that this community would be just really be shaped in a unique way, God. I pray for people who are just really desperate for direction and decisions and how to do this to be have clarity even now, Jesus. Holy Spirit, would you confirm to them? Would you remind them <laughs> in your gentle ways that you do that? In Jesus' name. I feel like the Lord wants to encourage us and remind us that the government rests upon his shoulders. Not on ours, we have our part to play, but the government rests on his shoulders and that we have peace when we realize that. And I feel like the Lord is, uh, you know, calling us to um, listen to the least of these. Give a voice to the voiceless. A lot of you guys in this room have influence and I feel like the Lord wants you to listen to their stories so that you can go out and have influence in a powerful way. It's wonderful. Okay, well, I want to invite anyone up who would like to receive prayer. If you sense the Lord stirring something in your heart that you just, you want to press into with someone else, want to invite you to come on up and to receive prayer. I know Rick is excited to pray for people. I know our whole prayer team is excited to pray for people. Um, and if you came in just feeling sick or down or having any other needs, we would love to, to pray with you. Um, I'm going to bring the, our service to a formal close. And so that means that if you're, you know, if you're ready to head out, then you'll be able to, to head on out with the rest of your day. And if you want to stay in worship and pray with us, you can stay until the Lord stops moving. So when we formally close our service each week, we hold hands across the aisle as a, a symbol of unity and love. So if you can take the hands of people who are standing near you. And um, I want to do something uh, a little bit different right now. If I can get the worship band to quiet down for, actually to stop for just a moment. Um, I, 
Last week at the end of the service, I shared with you that uh, when I was a little girl, before I knew anything about Jesus, I used to go to my grandmother's church about maybe once a year. I learned almost nothing about the gospel, but we used to sing a song there. Um, and the words were, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. Um, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. And, and we used to sing that at the end of every service uh, at that church. And I'd like to sing that right now together. It seems fitting. I don't know if anyone else knows this song. And there's a reason that I'm not on the worship team. So <laughs> this might, it might be a little bit tuneless. So if you know this song, please, please help me out. <laughs> yeah, but. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God as our Father, brothers all are we. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. And Lord, we do just want to acknowledge right now that peace begins with us. Would you put our pe your peace in our hearts? Would you fill us as we go from here, Lord? Would you commission us to be peacemakers in our neighborhoods and communities? We thank you for your love and for your grace and your empowerment in our lives. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So come on up if you'd like to receive prayer. You guys can sound better than I do. <laughs>